Hey everybody, so this is a brand new topic, brand new circuit component called an operational amplifier. So maybe nobody really says that. It's op amp for operational amplifier, op amp. So it's an integrated circuit uh, comprised of other components. We're not really concerned with the internals this semester or how it works. We're concerned with how it behaves, so we're studying the behavior at the terminals. So this is the symbolic representation of an op amp. You can see it has five terminals. It has positive and negative power supply pins, so that's like here and here on the integrated circuit, the IC. There are two inputs, so there's a non-inverting input here and an inverting input here. So that corresponds to, for example, here and here. And then things happen internally and it generates an output here, which corresponds to here. Okay, so internal, just so you have a glimpse, it looks kind of like this. I just pulled this straight from a data sheet of a pretty common op amp. So it's a bunch of transistors primarily. So you can see like this is the positive and negative power uh, here and here. And then here are the inputs, inverting input, non-inverting input, this and this. And then here's the output right here, the output. And these are just to offset the, the output. And this means no connection. And just foreshadowing for future semesters, transistors, you can think of it like, say you have a reservoir of water with like a spigot and there's a valve over here. So you turn the valve, water comes out, right? The more you turn the valve, the more water comes out. That's like a one interpretation of how a transistor works. So let's pick one, like say right here, this one. The current that's flowing here, that's like you turning the valve, which controls the current that flows this way. So the more current going here is like you turning the, opening the valve to the faucet more, and then more water flows through, more current flows this way. Okay, now how does an op amp work? Let's see. Or more so, what does it do? Let me draw that schematic. Okay, so we draw the symbolic representation like this with the five terminals. And let's say I pick a reference over here, external to the actual op amp. So this is my reference. That's the, the zero, the ground, where I'm calling zero volts. So with respect to that reference, this is my negative power supply. Over here is my positive power supply. And then there are always going to be labels on the op amp with a, like a plus and a minus. So this one is the inverting input. So I'll call it the voltage Vn for negative for this negative sign. And I'll call this one VP for plus, for this plus sign. And then this is the output, which I'll call VO for output. Okay, so now I labeled the five voltages. Now for current, I'm just going to draw all the currents going in. Okay, and I'll label this IN for the negative sign, so that's the inverting input. I, P, for like the plus sign, so that's my non-inverting input. Here I'll just call this VC plus for my positive power supply, VC minus for my negative power supply, well not V, O, I, right, current. I, I, and I, O for the output current. Okay, now 
how does it behave? Imagine you have voltage here and here. What an op amp does is it takes the difference between the input voltages. So let's say VP minus VN, the difference between these two. And then apply some sort of gain, so some kind of gain here, like 10,000. So the output is some gain times the difference between the two inputs. So that's the output. Sort of, not exactly, because the output is limited to the power supply. It can never go more than the positive power supply. It can never be less than the negative power supply. So it's limited. So the output, I'll just say this, it's between the positive power supply voltage and the negative supply voltage. Now what happens if you exceed, if this number is more than the positive, then it just caps out. So let me, let me draw it like this. Right? It cannot exceed. So the output equals the positive power supply if it tries to exceed and then it caps out on the negative side if it tries to go below. Okay, so let me graph that. Maybe it's easier to see kind of a picture. So on the horizontal axis, if this is the difference between the input voltages and on the vertical axis, if this is the output, it behaves linearly as long as it's, so for this graph, you see this, uh, if I move this over here and over here, so that as long as it's V plus over A, or over here, V minus over A, then it behaves linearly. But if it tries to go more, right, let me move this over here, greater than V plus over A, then it gets saturated like this. And it gets saturated at V plus. And here, if I move this over here, it tries to go below this number. It gets saturated at V minus. Okay, so this is what the output looks like. It's linear as long as it doesn't try and go beyond the power supply voltages. All right, so here it gets saturated, here it's linear. Okay, let me clean this up for the... All right, so this is the output. Okay, now for now, let's make some assumptions, some idealizations. Okay, so let's assume that the voltage here and here, whatever the op amp internally is making these match, and so the internal resistance we're saying is very, very high so that the difference between these two input voltages is very, very small. So our number one assumption is the difference between these two are very small, so small that they're practically the same. So that's our assumption number one. They're the same. Okay, assumption number two is it takes so little current going in here and here, basically to run the op amp, so little current, practically none. So we're assuming the current is very, very small. So we're going to assume it's zero. Okay, so these are our two assumptions. 
idealizations. So remember this forever. Uh, in a future video, we'll relax these assumptions where this is not equal and this is not zero, but we'll deal with that later. I would rather you focus on how to analyze op-amps and the procedure to do it. Okay, so let's try one example. So here we're assuming an ideal op-amp. Right here. Okay, now how do we analyze this? Let's use the node voltage method. How many essential nodes do we have? Mm, that one. I'll call and so this is the inverting input so I'm gonna call this node voltage V n and here's my reference okay so let's do KCL at node n so if I say positive going out uh, let, me, let me draw it over here kind of like this Okay, so going this way toward the left, Vn minus Va over 25k. Okay, now going this way, plus Vn minus, what's the voltage right here? Vo, Vo over 100k. Now this way, what is this? This is the current. I n, right? Because over here is I n and over here is I p. Okay, so plus I n equals zero. Okay, so that's TCL at node n. Now let's do use the assumptions for an ideal op amp. So the voltage here is the same as the voltage here. Okay, so the voltage at P is the same as the voltage at N here, here. But what is the voltage here? It is VB. Right? Not in general, just for this particular drawing, right? This is the reference. This side is higher by VB. So right here is VB. Right? This is VB. Okay. So then I can replace VN here with VB. I can replace VN over here with VB. All right, now what is the other assumption for an ideal op amp? The current equals zero. The current going in here and the current going in here, they're both a zero. So look at right here, that's zero. Okay, so now let's get an expression for the output voltage. So let's solve this. Okay, so I'm gonna move this on the other side of the equation. Okay, let's multiply both sides by 100,000. So that gets rid of this, and this has to be times four. So times four. Okay, and then I'll pick this up and move it on that side. So VO is four, so five, VB minus 4VA. Okay, so that's the output voltage. Sort of, we have to be careful. The output voltage looks like this, right? We have to watch out for saturation. It can never go more than 10 volts, and it can never be less than negative 10 volts. So let's be careful that this is definitely less than 10, 
more than negative 10. Okay, now let's take a look at this. What's the output if VA is one volt and VB is zero? So then that's like zero minus four. Is this between 10 and negative 10? Yes. So the output is negative four. Okay, part B. Uh, VA is one volt. VB is two volts. Okay, so is this less than or equal to, is it less than 10, more than negative 10? Yeah, this is a six, right? So B is six volts. Okay, part C. If VA is 1.5 volts, what's the range of B that avoids saturation? Okay, so it looks like, so 5VB and then VA was 1.5, so times four is six. Okay, so it's asking us to solve for VB. So let me add six everywhere. So negative 10 plus six, 10 plus six, and then divide by five. And here we go. So VB is in this range right here. Okay. Um, let me do another example just to make sure you're careful with the algebra. So for example, I'm gonna make up my own problem. Let's say VB is given as one. Okay, so VB is one. What range of VA works where we avoid saturation? Right, so then here, let me subtract five everywhere. Okay, and now I want to divide both sides by negative four. But when you divide by a negative, what happens to the inequalities? When you divide by negative, the inequalities flip over, right? They flip over the other way. So just be careful about that. There, right? So now, right, you see this negative over negative then becomes positive. Okay, so let me get to some more examples in other videos. So I'll see you on those.